All right, so last time we talked about Night Brewery. Now, I wanted to go in a little bit of a different direction with the next game we should, you know, talk about. I've already mentioned it a couple of times, but Hunt the Night is a game I've been pretty excited about. Maybe it's because I have been on a soul binger. I love the difficulty, obviously, I love the design especially, and I love the world, and... Hunt the Night features all of those in a beautiful pixelated Zelda-esque world. It is essentially the game that would happen if Bloodborne and the uh, old Legend of Zelda games got drunk together one night, got a motor room and well, one of them came out pregnant. This would be the kit. Um, it's a game that marries up the combat and look of Zelda with Bloodborne. And we are going to talk about why that is really cool and what it does right and what it does not as right. Personally, I'm going to be pretty positive throughout the entire thing. I know about a lot of the complaints about the game, but we're going to cover them as we go. And otherwise, you know, just enjoy the video. But before we get started, I just want to thank everybody out there who are watching these. Because at least on the last video, it went incredibly well. Um, I didn't expect it to get any views, if I'm being honest. I know I know the game isn't exactly the most popular, as I mentioned as well, but I really like it and I thought it was worth sharing. So thank you for the support. It means the world to me. Anyway, let's get started. So, to start out, I want to introduce the game to you the same way it was introduced to me. Because I think it's done really well in a really beautiful way but to do that and to play that cutscene I need to first read this out because it sets sort of the stage for what we're about to see. Day and night alternate in an endless cycle where a myriad tides of time passes between each one. The cycle of day is ruled by humanity and the night by horrid creatures despite their best efforts the arrival of the night always heralds death for humanity. In the nine, ninth age of man, far beyond the twilight, only two things keeps humanity from total annihilation. The moonlight and the stalkers. And now we can play the cutscene. Now, I did mention Hunt the Night is exceedingly difficult, to the point where half of the player base dropped off before killing the second boss. I have seen web reviews where they call it wonky and shit because, well, they really didn't get further than the second boss according to themselves anyway. And if you don't get further than to the second boss, I would fully understand that perspective. Because the second boss fight is bullshit, as the hitbox can be a little bit wonky, but if you can survive at that hurdle, everything else in the game is on point and is still exceedingly difficult, but in a fun and interesting way. I don't think games necessarily need to be hard, and that's obviously a discussion for another video, there already is entire videos on difficulties in games. But I think a game like Elden Ring or Hunter Knight or Souls in general and Souls likes mostly all give you enough options as well to beat the game in a good manner. And Hunter Knight is no different. In the early game, before you can upgrade stuff, yes, it is incredibly difficult that you don't have a lot of options. But as you play more, you have enough more options to tackle each combat situation in a different way. And it ends up Honestly impacting it enough to the point where I'd say by the end it's fairly alright. It's a good difficulty curve. Um, it just ends up 
unfortunately been extremely hard on the early game so if you want to pick this up or you're like considering it when you're watching this just keep that in mind um, it does get better it gets really good matter of fact by the end and there are fights in it that i am incredibly proud to have beaten that i will i think i'll remember them for a while honestly so yeah that's like my quick thoughts on the, the difficulty anyway i'll move on to something that i actually know a little bit more about very much like other souls games this game has two stories it has its lore and it has its character development the lore is deep and fascinating and it would take me forever to discuss it i really recommend you go and buy it then you can read it for yourself or you find a playthrough or have somebody else read it out for you you know there are multiple options but for me to cover it in just this video it will require me to go for 30 40 minutes talking about lore alone um but to cover the story in it of itself you play as a vesper vesper is a stalker and her dad decided to break the last seal to keep humanity safe. Now, everybody, Miss Sonok doesn't trust your bloodline anymore as your brother tried to go in and rectify this mistake your dad made and also sort of just disappeared on his journey. So, you go out being a part of the stalkers to try to find out what happened and how you can fix the seal. And that's the very basic plot. At the end, you're given some options on how you want to approach it and whatnot. But at the end of the day, that is your story. And then it's just about you getting from point A to point B. The entire game is linear, meaning that there aren't any... You can take this bus before you take this bus before you take that bus. No, it is an A, B, C, D, E pattern all the way through. Like you take one bus and then to the next in a set order. It's not randomized and you can't decide. Um... And on one hand, I honestly think this serves the game better than it would have been if it was more open. Because if it wasn't like that, you would stumble into an area and get instantly one shot by an enemy or a bigger boss because you hadn't gotten the right health upgrade yet. So it sort of makes sense, right? It's a good system for it. <laughs> and the thing with upgrades in on the night in comparison to souls is that to upgrade your hp here it's not a stat or nothing like that it is however tied to side quests so you gotta complete certain side hunts to then upgrade your hp which then allows you to do more stuff and so on and so forth and weapons can be upgraded so you really don't have a whole lot of uses for your money other than the one simple thing there are two things you can upgrade the amount of health vials you have for in this case roses or your arsenal your special weapons the shotgun the pistol and the bow you have probably seen me use each by now and they are really fucking awesome but i personally do prefer the pistol especially with some of the ladder upgrades it is just really crispy um and while there are different equipment they generally don't feel as impactful as i think something like the equipment in souls does that's specifically because here they just give you a step boost and that's about it they mildly change your character visually as well however to me where hunt the knight succeeds beyond everything else it's not the combat it's not the gameplay really it is the character design i'm gonna run you through a couple of character designs because i think they are so cool and while well, i'm not gonna spot all of them i am mainly gonna keep to promotional stuff i am gonna show you a couple so to start off with here we have a mother and here right after mother we have Kravens. i have no idea who this is or how he is or whatnot but he is super cool looking and i really love the boss fight i love the 
speed of it and whatnot, but just look at the details on him. Everywhere from like the human sticking out of the eyes and how they light up and everything like that. It's just really, really well made. But how can we talk about any of this without talking about one of the things I like to talk about the most? The vibes. And the vibes are heavily influenced by the music. I'm gonna again play my favorite track. This time it's not the main theme. From the game. A little bit. Just to let you experience it, hear it. And then if you want to, can you just leave your thoughts about it in the comments? I'd appreciate just to see if, you know, how everybody else feels about it. But I just think it's a hauntingly beautiful track and it fits really well into the game. So, what did you think? I personally think it's really good. Again, I think it fits the game. Because you see, with combat, the aesthetic, the entire feel of the game and the story that you keep having in the back of your head, it adds up to this incredible experience of, I wouldn't even say super tenseness, but rather this weird feeling of horror on the cosmic scale of the what do I even matter in a world where everything like this can happen? What is the chances for humanity's survival, right? It ends up not feeling hopeless per se, but more hopeful because despite there not being a whole lot of chances for humanity to survive, you are doing it. You are actively helping humanity survive through the absolute and total destruction of some of the bosses and you know what i like that i like that idea and the message and well the vibe and the fear it gives it reminds me of the days of sitting up at late you know late at night beating a hard level in a game that you just couldn't get past whether it be lego star wars for you like it was for me or it be something else right like it reminds me of that, that feeling that specific one and this game gives me you that in loads not to mention it's cosmic horror and i think it's safe to say i really like cosmic horror but yeah i don't have much more to say about it other than i really think it's worth checking out and i think you're doing yourself a disservice by not doing it however if you are checking it out just have that in mind that it will get better after the second boss the second boss is a huge hurdle. It is about 30% of players who got to that point dropped off. Like it goes, if you look on Steam achievement for me, like 64% of players killed the first boss to only like 34 <laughs> killed the second one and then it normalizes. Because after that, the game does get more forgiving. It does get better. It's just something to keep in mind. I will have an outro playing from here and until at some point so if you aren't interested in that you can take off now thank you for watching um i don't really consider these reviews but you know they kind of are i guess i just wanted to talk about hot the night i don't think it's getting enough attention so this has been my call so yeah thank you for watching so yeah that's gonna be the next video it's gonna be out in a week but yeah, I'll get over to finishing up the Hunter Knight video. I hope you all enjoyed this. If you did, I suppose do the YouTube stuff like leave a like, subscribe to me if you really want to. I'm not gonna force you. If you don't, then don't worry about it. You're always welcome here. So yeah, I will go and check that out. I'll sign off and then probably also head to bed soon because it is 1 a.m. Goodbye.